Welcome to Glambot. Before you begin, please review your assembly instruction manual and the safety instructions. The estimated length for the first time you build your unit is 30 minutes. For safety and ease, we recommend you use two people for the assembly process. All of the hardware and tools you will need are included and can be found in the Glambot arm case. It is imperative that you have the appropriate amount of space before running your Glambot. A minimum 10 foot wide by 10 foot long by 9 foot high space is required to avoid collisions. Warning! A collision with Glambot may cause physical damage to property, person or the robotic arm. Ensure proper clearance of the robot at all times. All persons and objects must remain outside the work envelope. By operating Glambot, you are assuming the associated risks and liabilities. Step 1. Remove the base from the box or travel crate. Place the base on the floor approximately 8 feet from the desired target location with the power strip facing back. If needed, level the base using the ratchet adjustment integrated into each of the four casters. Ensure the base is on level ground, solid and stable. Remove the two magnetic perforated panels and place them to the side. Remove the base case from the work envelope. Step 2. Remove the pedestal from the box or travel crate. Place the pedestal centered on the base, aligning the mounting holes and making sure that no wires are pinched. The light should be facing forward toward your desired target. Using the 15mm wrench in your toolbox, attach the 4M10 flanged hex head bolts. These bolts are labelled H1 in your assembly instruction manual. Torque tight and go over the bolts a second time as needed to ensure tightness. Bolt tightness in any step of the Glambot assembly is essential for both safety and to ensure as smooth as possible of the robotic movement. If a component is not properly tightened, it may cause micro vibrations, which will cause the arm and camera to be more shaky. Next, make sure the unit's main power cord is not plugged in yet. Then route the two black NEMA plugs and the USB-C cord under the base and plug them into the power strip at the rear of the base. Finally, plug the two USB-A cables into the mini PC, tucking any excess cable away. Then, replace the two magnetic perforated panels. Step 3. Remove the arm assembly from the box or travel case and place on the ground in front of the base. Next, extend the elbow joint out from the stowed position of 160 degrees to a position of 90 degrees. Then, place the arm on its side. Locate the dowel pin on the pedestal so you know how to align the arm. With the arm directed straight ahead to the front, align the dowel pin and set the arm on the pedestal. We recommend having two bolts ready to secure the arm so that you do not have to hold it. Place the two bolts opposite of each other and thumb tighten. Use the remaining two M10 flanged hex head bolts to attach the arm to the pedestal. These bolts are labelled H1 in your assembly instruction manual. Use the 15mm wrench to tighten the bolts. Using a star pattern of tightening, torque the bolts tight. It is imperative a star pattern of tightening is used due to uneven weight distribution. We recommend going over the bolts two to three times to ensure the tightest fit. Next, looking from the rear of the unit, begin with the right side wire harness. First, plug in the USB-C wires into the panel on the bottom side of the arm, plugging the cable with the yellow stripe into the power port and the other cable into the data port. Next, plug in the three multi-pin data and power connectors. 
Then, attach the left side harness by plugging in the two power and data connectors into the lift motor. These connectors are a little tricky to get in. We recommend one hand going from the front of the unit and one hand guiding the connectors from the bottom. Finally, plug in the mating power connectors for the brake at the rear of the unit. Step 4. Remove the wrist from the box or travel case. Extend the arm to the horizontal position. Orient the wrist assembly such that the nesting motor protrudes up out of the top of the arm. Slide the wrist assembly between the plates at the end of the arm assembly, ensuring no wires are pinched. Using the four M6 flanged hex head bolts, attach the wrist. These bolts are labelled H2 in your assembly instruction manual. Double check to ensure no wires are pinched between the plates. Then, using the 10mm wrench, torque the bolts tight. Go over the bolts a second time to tighten as needed. Next, plug in the cable on the wrist into the panel on the top side of the arm. If holding the arm, gently let the arm fall to hang vertically to a 90 degree angle. Double check that the arm is at 90 degrees. If your camera, GoPro or phone is already attached to the wrist, ensure it is gently tucked back toward the base to avoid damage. Congratulations, you have completed the Glambert assembly. You may now proceed to the initialization. Glambot initialization instructions. This is a guide to turning on and running your Glambot. Before starting, ensure access to a standard outlet. For customers outside the US, your unit has already been modified for your country's voltage. However, an included power adapter may be required. It is imperative that you have the appropriate amount of space before running your Glambot. A minimum 10 foot wide by 10 foot long by 9 foot high space is required to avoid collisions. Ensure your unit is on level, solid and stable ground. Stop! Do not turn on Glambot before performing the pre-launch check. Remove any tools and equipment from the work envelope before performing the next step. Ensure that Glambot is located securely on a sturdy surface and can remain stable during operation. Double check that the arm is at 90 degrees. If your camera, GoPro or phone is already attached to the wrist, ensure it is gently tucked back toward the base to avoid damage. Double check that all bolts on the base, shoulder and wrist are securely tightened. Examine that all cables are intact, connected to appropriate connectors and properly secured. Make certain that the emergency stop button is located where the operator can reach it at all times. Finally, confirm that there are no obstacles within the work envelope of the robot that could prevent the arm from moving freely or operating properly. Identify and eliminate all risks of potential collisions. A minimum of seven feet of clearance from the front of the robot and three feet of clearance from the rear of the robot is required. Additionally, looking from the front of the unit, a minimum clearance of five and a half feet on the left side and four and a half feet on the right side is required. A nine foot height clearance is required at all times. Plug Glambot into an appropriate outlet and ensure the e-stop is up. Then turn the switch on the power strip at the base of your unit to on. The unit will now begin the calibration sequence. Approximately 30 seconds after powering on, the wrist motors will orient to their respective zero position. Immediately after wrist calibration, place your hand under the first joint to allow the brake to release. Apply gently upward support until the arm starts to move. The remaining three motors will physically calibrate by moving through an extended range of motion in the following order. Elbow, lift and pan. If the arm does not begin to calibrate, check that the lights on the motors are green. If there is an orange flashing light on the lift shoulder motor, the arm was not properly supported after the wrist calibration and the brake did not release. Turn the unit off and back on and start the calibration over.
total calibration time for all motors is approximately three minutes. Congratulations, you have now completed the initialization phase. You are now ready for operation and to begin filming. Approximately 30 seconds after calibration, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth networks will be established. Connect a separate tablet, laptop or phone to the Glambot local Wi-Fi network. Refer to your initialization instructions to find your unit network name and password. Then, open the Glambot motion control software by navigating to a browser and entering the HTTP web address found in your initialization instructions. If necessary, replace the XXX in the web address with the number found on the base of your unit. Next, let's set up your filming device. If you have not already done so, download your preferred live editing and sharing app on a secondary device. For training purposes, we will be using Snapic running on an iPhone 15 and hardwired into a Canon R8 camera. It not already attached. First, connect your camera, GoPro or phone to the Glambot wrist using the provided mount. Next, connect a 3-foot coiled USB-C cable to the data port on the underside of the arm near the wrist. Attach the other end of the cable into the data port on your camera. If using a wired power supply, also plug the power supply USB-C into the power port next to the data port. Next, using a 6-foot USB-C cord, connect your snap pick device to the data port located in the back of the pedestal. Now, connect your snap pick device to the Glambot Bluetooth. Ensure no other devices are connected to the Glambot's Bluetooth. Next, open your snap pick app on the iPhone. Select your event profile. Select configure camera. Turn on your camera. Choose any of the R8 options that populate. Then select accessories, then volume buttons. Next, select start photo booth. For a full guide of recommended camera, GoPro or phone settings, please visit the Knowledge Base page of our website. Once your camera settings are tuned, select Start Booth. Using the Glambot web app, select Home on the screen. This position moves the arm out of the way while guests enter the envelope and is an optional feature of Glambot. Next, set your speed to Send It for the smoothest path option. You will notice on the Glambot motion control screen a stop button. This button is the desired way to stop your unit and will not cut power to the robot. However, in case of emergency, use the emergency stop on the power cord to cut power to the unit. To run a session, select the desired path or paths. Select video on the Snapic device. If using Glambot's templates, you will see multiple recording time options. Select the recording time that best matches the path time found in the upper right corner of the motion control screen. Select Next. Once on the snap pick, tap to start screen. Select Start on the motion control screen. The robot will move to the start position and filming will begin once the robot begins the path. If needed, the countdown duration can be changed in the advanced settings of the motion control software. Congratulations, you are now ready to start capturing stunning cinematic moments. To power off your unit, select off slash extend on your motion control screen. We recommend removing your DSLR or mirrorless camera prior to powering down. Now you may turn the switch on the power strip at the base of your unit to off. Your arm too will gently fall and your unit is now ready for disassembly. We hope that you have found this instructional video helpful. Our team is happy to provide support should you need any additional assistance.